Yeah, good. Um, I, I just have a couple of questions about what you just said. I knew, I knew you did. Yeah, one was, oh, good. One was, um, <laughs> there has to be a locality for this mind-body thing that you're looking at to have particular experiencing. That's the first thing. And... The second thing is, who's running the show? All right, so... And so, but that's a different sort of question. Yeah, yeah. So, first thing... Um, <laughs> that would be a typical um, idea of the mind. There must be a location. Mm. If there's no location, how could experiencing be happening? True? Yes, like you know, you experience your uh, lounge room and your screen in in a different way that I do the same for my for my situation. So yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, all I can say to that <laughs> Well, you know stuff that I don't know and I know stuff you don't know. So what I can't see how that's going to, that's very controversial. <laughs> I know, but it's it's still all coming from even the, the even the, the the question is arising uh, in duality. Even the question. See, there's an assumption that there's a location. Okay, now if there's a location, who or what is it that's located in that location? This particular portal for the divine intelligence, or whatever you want to call it, I don't know. Yeah, don't know yeah, that, it. yeah, yeah, that just came from your head in your direct experience. <laughs> <laughs> in your direct experience, who's who's located where? Well, I can't find anything. To be honest. Right. Good. So you go with the truth. Go with the truth of your own experience, and then watch the mind. Then simply just watch the mind throw up exactly what it just threw up in, in, in relation to that question. Just watch it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah. So there's a there's a way in which the play the play runs with this reality of um, these apparent creatures who do have apparent separate experiences. Mm. I get it. So yep. so really it's. A, it's it's the wrong question because you're asking the question from the from the basis of the separated personality rather from the basis of correct the one within whom and what it all happens correct I, okay so the question's based on the assumption that there's a me here that's experiencing a location okay. now yeah what, now yeah. now what is it that said that or assumes that the mind yes this uh well, it's, it's, it sounds pretty good to me, but yeah, I, I can see once you've deconstructed it, how it's just a just a it's a obvious statement from a premise that isn't isn't true. Yeah, from your direct experience. Yeah. That's the that's the important thing to see. From your direct experience, it's not true. Yeah. So, so you know, again, you know, you can have these. You continue to have these contradictory experiences. So on the one hand, there is no separate person or entity. Yet on the other, there apparently is. So so then you get the that sort of dissonance between yeah. the two things. And and I suppose what you're saying is, well, you know, you resolve your dissonance with just returning to the, the fundamental question about um, your the non-reality of the separate person. But the but I suppose that that that's a way through. Yes, I yeah. Well, that's that's the only way. The truth yeah. is, the truth is the only way. 
But then there's the play, you see. There's the uh, then there's just what happens, and and this sort of interesting variety of what parent personalities and apparent people and apparent yeah. drama yeah. and apparent this is an apparent that. And, yep. And then and then there's that play which does seem to exist somewhere in in somebody in something's imagination. It may not be me as a dream character, but it may be some mm-hmm. some other entity which is having a good um, imaginal session at my expense. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, look, <laughs> if I if I there's a couple of different approaches I could take to this, but let's take this one. You're being dreamed. Yes, yes. You're completely being dreamed, which then begs the question, well, who's the dreamer? Yeah, exactly. Please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's why I, that's why I sometimes ask you, yeah, um, am I the thinker? Or when you're asleep, are you responsible for the dream that's occurring when your body's... No, so I'm not. asleep on the bed, yeah? Yeah? Then I say, then I might say, um, where do thoughts come from? And then where do they go to? I mean, where the hell do they come from? Yeah. We never, I, we never yeah. question it. And it's we never question, it? Yeah. and we never question, where the hell do they go? We're so fond of duality. It's amazing we don't ask that question. Yeah, yeah I agree. Like, um, <laughs> you know, it's quite fascinating. The just being in the middle of something that that thought emerges from and then articulates itself into language yep. in a spontaneous manner. Yep. That's kind of very odd. Very. I mean, sure, there's shorthand ways of saying that, like I said this or whatever it is. But sure, sure. it's quite mysterious. The whole thing. I mean, I, I find it. When you look at it, like, wow, that's kind of strange, you know, yeah. how that works sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The, the idea there, what we're trying to invoke there is the fact that you are conscious of all that. Now, none of us, like, when we're caught in the story, when we're caught in the me, we are so not conscious or yeah, if I could put it this way, we're not conscious of being conscious. Sound asleep. Walking around, driving our cars all over the place and or going to work and interacting with people and so on. We're sound asleep to consciousness itself. Yeah. And it's only consciousness that could be aware of the mind. Only. <laughs> yep. how else could be aware of the mind and and the content of the mind yeah <laughs> so the idea is to at least start to it's like a separating out lloyd from the mind starting to see that the, all of that's just happening oh i'm not the thinker and if i was i'd stop mm. it yeah yeah, I, I do. I do. Yeah, I understand that. Good. You've said many times. Good. Now, it's investigate what you're not. Yes, good. absolutely. Good. Now, it's only consciousness that recognizes what you're not. Not Lloyd. I'm, when I say not Lloyd, I'm talking about the personal Lloyd that we, or that you've been taking yourself to be. It's not Lloyd that recognizes it. It's consciousness that recognises it. So the more you can start to come to see what you're not and that everything, I don't care what it is, everything is just happening, the more you come to see all that, the more conscious you become <laughs> in your direct experience of actually being conscious, being here, being awake, aware, aware of being Because you, you know, like <laughs> when we go look, look, when we go look into the personal person, what do we find? I mean, seriously, 
if there really was a personal person there, we'd find it in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, we'd find it. It's, it's a construction. It's a very useful construction, basically. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Until this starts happening. <laughs> yeah. It's a, this is a... This process is an unlearning. It's not a learning. It's an unlearning. Yeah. And, and not at any time during this process are we trying to find our true self. Not at any time. We're never asked to do that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That'd be just false self looking for true self. And you've heard me do that one. Yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's just recognizing what's actually happening, what's actually happening. <clears throat> yeah. Yep, yep. Like, if you look outside of yourself for a moment, yeah, when you see a car go by, yeah, mind says that car's moving. What's what's in your direct experience, in the absolute direct experience, okay, the car seems to be moving, yeah, in relation to what? Where mind says it once was. But mind says it once was there, but the, real the reality is in your direct experience, it's not there. It's always just here, now. Now, it's mind that creates the illusion that there's movement. It's useful. Yeah. <laughs> it's useful. I'm not saying that, that you know, yeah. mind is amazing. It's an amazing instrument. Incredible. The only time it becomes problematic is when it makes up a seeming person and then the seeming person wants to wake up from it. <laughs> then it's a problem for, for a little while, for a little while until you start to see what's actually happening. But even the mere fact that you're on this path or that you're looking at this stuff, nothing to do with Lloyd. Yeah. Zero. This is also just happening. That's why sometimes you'll hear me say with people, yeah, relax. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this whole process has got nothing to do with you. Relax. Seriously, relax. And just keep coming back to the truth. That's all. That's all. You know, that, that you know, I, Bob used to say that all the time. I mean, he still does, but um, the truth is what sets you free. The truth from your direct experience, your direct experience, you do not need mind for direct experience. Yeah. Like you're sitting there now and you're conscious, Lloyd, yeah? Yeah. And you absolutely know it. Yeah. Do you need mind to tell you you're conscious? Or you know? Are you seeing right now? Yes. Yeah. Do you need mind to step in and say, you know, to clarify that? No. No. That's the direct experience. From your direct experience. That's why I got you guys to do that 10 minute thing looking at the clock, the, the, the minute hand, looking at it. When when does it move? In your direct experience, mind will say, well, it's at the five minute mark now. And I remember it was, it was, it was back there, but in your direct experience, you've got nothing to compare it to. You've literally have nothing to compare it to. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's always come back to your direct experience. Always. And trust that. Trust that. 
don't trust this. <laughs> don't trust this. Yeah. 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 I, suppose, I suppose to the mind, you're just, it seems like uh, you're, you're asking for something which is a bit like, I, I do realize the contradiction in my statement here, but you know, there is a world of movement and there is a world of people running around. And there is, even if you do, even if you want to get rid of the doer and just use doing, that's fine. Uh, you know, you can you can make that compromise, but the reality is there's oh, well, you know, who knows what the reality is, <laughs> but you know, there's a an apparentness to the dream, okay? And yeah. I suppose that's true. So that's fine, you know, you can flip out and you know, realize the true nature of the dream and wake up and there's and and I suppose before that happens, there's still this apprehension of wait a minute, I still have to go to work, I still have to feed my face, I, I still have to negotiate traffic. Yeah. You know, like there's all that there. But I think what you're saying is, hey, just go with your direct experience. That'll take care of itself. Correct. As yeah. it always has. As it always has. As it always has. There's just an assumption that there's me that's been doing it all. An assumption. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah. You don't really you don't really need to negotiate the dream once you've woken up, hey. No, nah, not at all. Okay. <laughs> not at all. Everything's still just happening. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> it comes with its own self-sourcing pudding. It like comes with its own source. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I do understand. I thank you so much. That's yeah. Very clear. Very yeah. Clear. Yeah, the only thing I want to add there is um, in your direct experience, you're conscious. And none of us have got a fucking clue what that is until we know what that is. And it's constantly overlooked. And the reason that it's overlooked is because mind steps in and says, yeah, I'm conscious. Mind can't experience consciousness. That's why, you know, being here and in the now and conscious and, and so on and so forth, is no big deal because mind can't get it. It literally can't experience it. And it's a dead, you know, you'll hear it. It's a dead giveaway. It'll go, yeah, yeah, I'm conscious. Meh. So it's profound. <laughs> it's profound being con. It's profound. <laughs> but there's a, you know, mind, see, all mind's got in relation to consciousness is a concept of it. And it literally takes the concept of consciousness to be consciousness. And the concept is not consciousness. That's what it does. <laughs> watch your own mind. Watch, you know, watch what it does. Watch it. The more you can watch it, the more conscious you become. You're no longer in it and wearing it like a skin. Yeah. Like you're in the middle of the dream, you know, or you're in the middle of the mind and, and toss this way and toss that way. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a coming out of it. Yeah. Gradual coming out of it. Yeah. And the more you can come out of it, the more conscious you become. And then at some point, at some point, there's just a, a loss of interest in mind altogether because this is realised to be real. This is realised to be alive. Then what will naturally occur is, and it might just come through as a thought, yeah, an idea, my God, what's this? What's this? Because you're starting to experience it directly then. Yeah. And you just lose interest in mind altogether. You don't need mind to explore this. <laughs> you are this. It's this that starts to awaken. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm.